Okay, welcome back to War Room. We're going to go right to it. No cold opens now. We're too pressed for time. Today was an inflection point. Uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, curated uh, a, a, a slew of witnesses in every one of the verticals about how the Biden campaign, the Democratic Party, stole this election. It's now all out in the open. He's going to be going around the country to every state to do this, rubbing their nose in it. And Josh Shapiro, the attorney general, he can get on Twitter all he wants. He's going to have to deal with this because there is no chance with this type of evidence and this type of data analytics uh, that people are going to let this stand. Impossible. President Trump's all jacked up. I think the state senator is actually heading down to the White House from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, even as we speak. I want to start with the GOP head of Montgomery County. It's become one of the most controversial areas in this entire election, in the entire nation. That's Liz Preate Havy. And you remember, for the audience, we actually visited with Liz and her team when they were doing, I think, a poll-watching exercise the weekend, the Saturday before, getting everybody all day long, getting everybody, um, uh, you know, schooled and signed off on and all the requirements. Liz, talk about your testimony. It was very powerful today. But first off, you're one of the few GOP actual representatives that were there. The rest, a lot of the other people were citizens, but you rep, you were G, you're the GOP head of Montgomery County, a very prestigious county, very important county uh, for, for uh, the Republican Party. Walk us through your testimony today. Well, thanks for having me on, Steve. Um, I testified today primarily about the lack of transparency in Montgomery County throughout the general election process. I also testified today about the illegal curing of ballots in Montgomery County. And finally, I noted that we found um, 188 dead people who voted in 2020, um, as well as some anomalies in the numbers through um, Kathy Barnett's campaign who ran for Congress. And we've been trying to dig through these numbers and we're coming up with some serious anomalies that need to be reviewed. Now, the lack of transparency that we saw in Montgomery County was similar to what you heard from Delaware County and from Mon from Philadelphia County, where we were not allowed to look at the ballots. We were allowed to see people dropping bundles of ballots and machines from several feet away, but we couldn't get our eyes on a single ballot ever. Um, we didn't have any ability to check whether or not this person had voted twice, to check whether this ballot was um, legally cast, whether the person was registered, nothing. This has never happened in the history of um, elections in Montgomery County. There was always uh, a, an ability to check. Had no ability to check, no ability to see. We were treated poorly, quite frankly. We were stuck in a pen um, far away from where these machines were operating. We couldn't see a lot of the machines at all. Um, so I, I did, I talked about that. Um, the other thing that I talked about was we found out two days prior to the election was confirmed to us that they were curing ballots, that the Democrat run county was curing ballots. So if somebody sent in a mail-in ballot that had a deficiency, they would call them and try to get them to fix it. We believe a lot of those fixes were done with provisional ballots. Um, but, you know, knowing that most of uh, they knew that the, you know, 70 percent of the mail and ballots that were that came in or 75 percent in Montgomery County were for Biden. Um, they knew exactly what they were doing and they didn't tell us. And they did it for weeks prior um, since at least October 21st. And they didn't tell us they were doing it immediately after discovering this. We started calling around. I spoke to the Speaker of the House. Um, he said this was not happening in other counties. I spoke to the leaders in Berks County of the election board there. Berks County is a county that the president won by 8%. It's a county that borders Montgomery, and it's one that shares our congressional district. And they told us, absolutely not. The law is clear. You're not allowed to cure ballots weeks in advance. And so we're not doing it. We went into court, federal court. Um, it got that case um, we ended up merging that into the to the other case that was in the middle district that's now before the Third Circuit um, to say that the you know this violates the voters' rights, um, equal protection rights are violated. Uh, the other thing I talked about was this discovery looking at the numbers, and we still don't have all the numbers. And if you look at the Department of State website, you can't get all the data, and we certainly haven't been provided with the data. We've can, made can, requests. But, but, hang, hang on. This, this is the one of the things my head blew up, and I knew people that I know, particularly the engine room of the uh, war room, heads blew up. This, You're the head of the Republican Party of Montgomery County, one of the most prestigious county in the Commonwealth of 
Pennsylvania. How can you not, how can the Secretary of State not have full, and to the Democrat too, how can both the Democrat and the Republican head not have every piece of information, every piece of data related to an election that's taken place, what, three weeks ago? You're exactly right. I can't tell you how many people voted from overseas. I can't tell you how many people were military ballots. I can't tell you how many ballots that were not voted at all because of these quote unquote defects. I've asked for all of it, requested it in writing, and we still don't have it. So whatever, what, when you see these analysis that are starting to pop up of the data, it's based on whatever the Department of State is allowing people to see. Um, and they're not answering the question. But, 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 not- but Liz, but Liz, Liz, here's, here's a question that our audience has across the country. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't the Secretary of State and the governor certify the vote in, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? Absolutely. They've been steamrolling through this whole process. For us, they just keep us, they just ignore us. The mainstream media ignores us as well. And they they keep saying there's no evidence of fraud. There's no evidence of fraud. The problem with that argument is we don't have the data and the information because they haven't given it to us to really dig down and discover what's happened in this election. We have seen anomalies with the numbers that are up there. We have discovered 188 people that are dead that voted. There's probably a lot more, but that's through initial analysis. But without really looking at these numbers and without anybody being able to check these ballots, no checks on this system, never in the history of the state has that happened. Um, Without any checks, we just trust them that it's all perfect and correct. So you haven't gotten the data, but I want to ask you on your first two, the lack of transparency, the lack of transparency. uh, How many ballots do you think that because these are the mail in ballots, I take it. How many of those ballots roughly do you think that incorporates? It's two hundred and sixty thousand. We have not been able to check. And how about two sixty there? And what about the curing? Do you have any uh, uh, do you have any uh, amount of potential to curing? You think they've cured uh, any any rough estimate? On the, the the day that they gave us the tour, two days before election, they said it was 2,700 uh, that they were attempting to cure. But we haven't got an update said, since then. And I don't have any, I have no reason to believe or not to, to believe what they're saying. I mean, I, I don't know. There's no data okay, on the got, website we the, that's telling you that. We got the colonel, but just one thing I want to make sure the nation, because the show goes all over the world. The secretary of state and the governor certified this vote, yet they have not given you basic basic data that you would need as a GOP head to make sure you were comfortable in your due diligence and with your fiduciary responsibility that you could sign off on. Exactly. 100% correct. Liz Preate Havy. Uh, Liz, what you, you have a Twitter handle people can follow you during the day? You know, I think it is Liz Preate Havy or Liz Havy. <laughs> I don't know. I just check it, but check check Liz Havy. We'll have her... We'll ha- 